Okay. Hi, it's Mary Bartis with the Bartos Group of Premier Plus Realty. And this morning I am joined by Lisa Fulkerson. Hello, Lisa. Hey, Mary. Thanks so much for having me. Oh my goodness, it's my pleasure. You know, Lisa's a top agent on our team that uh, has been with us for a number of years and both represents buyers and sellers in this marketplace. Has a really good uh, pulse of the market. And so today we thought it'd be great to really go in and talk about what's happening in our market. Um, before we launch into these slides, Lisa, do you have any thoughts of what you'd like to say before we launch in? Yeah, I think that uh, this particular webinar is going to be nothing but good news. And there are so many different things going on in different parts of uh, the nation that I think it's vital for anyone who's considering buying or selling here in the Southwest Florida that they get a better pulse on what's going on specifically in real estate in our area. So this is going to be great. I'm excited for you to show these slides. Awesome. Well, I will, without further ado, kind of drop in there and uh, start talking on those. So can you see the slides okay, Lisa? Yes, looks good. Fabulous. Well, as we discussed, this is a webinar for seller strategies. And um, you know, really what's happening right now is interesting, as Lisa mentioned. So what's happening across the US is very different, but I think we all have one uh, baseline for what is going to happen in the market and what has happened in the past from the analysts and what they're saying. So Lisa, you know, this chart has changed uh, when we started this in March sometime about what was gonna happen in that first quarter because we were still in first quarter and it dropped by about 4.8% with the GDP. Now we're, you know, we're sitting in middle of May. So we're in the middle of the second quarter and the analyst that we listen to is uh, Keeping Current Matters and they've added yet another financial institution to their slide here, which is Bank of America. I think, you know, we first quarter wasn't nearly as bad as they thought it would be. And second quarter, we've got some people that are a little more bullish on the recovery or the, you know, uh, things that it's not going to go down as far, uh, like JP Morgan Chase and Wells Fargo. And yet we have Goldman Sachs, interesting enough in the second quarter, is a little bit less optimistic of those numbers. But gosh, Lisa, look what's happening in the uh, second half of the year. Yeah, it's it's very exciting. You, you see how uh, Goldman Sachs almost does a 180 there. They've gone from, you know, um, some, some really bad reporting in quarter two, but look at quarter three with Goldman Sachs particularly. And uh, Mary, you added um, that Bank of America is now we're showing their predictions as well. And I'm, I'm glad about that. There are so many uh, folks out there that have a relationship already with Bank of America. And um, you know, this, this is just a, a great participant and I'm glad to see that, that they're involved in showing us what their predictions are as well. You know, 77% of our market, Lisa has a relationship with Bank of America in some fashion. Right, yeah. I, they're a partner of ours in the lending world. Mm -hmm or we are of, of them, I, I should say, because they're way bigger than we are. But it is nice to see what they are saying as you know, one of the largest financial institutions out there. You know, so the prediction for second quarter, which we've seen is, is kind of bad in the GDP, but we're kind of rounding that corner as we're moving into the third quarter. You know, Lisa, a lot of things have been going on about um, jobs right now. You know, I, I catch snippets of the news and um, we have really the Bureau of Labor Statistics with job loss or loss of jobs has been a bit horrific and who got hit the hardest was servers and bartenders. Obviously the rest are kind of coming down, but you know, I've even heard on the news that people are saying it's like equals the depression. The, the difference when I watched the news that they were talking about, and there were some slides we could have shared on, shown on this, was that, you know, that lasted over years. Um, my parents were, boom, were babies in the, you know, were 10 years old when the depression hit. So they lived through that. So it's very different when the health crisis is hitting it um, as it was then. And again, the ones in the service industry that took the biggest hit is, makes sense. Likewise, if you look at the income that the jobs, the people with these jobs have that took the biggest hit 
is 40% were making under 40,000. Lisa, you mentioned something rather interesting about your son. He's in that, um, that space, right? He absolutely is, yes. Um, he actually works two jobs and he works um, in a government agency in the Dayton, Ohio area, but on evenings and weekends, he works for uh, a, a restaurant entertainment kind of place. And of course he was, he was furloughed from that. And, you know, they're thinking about opening with, with some limitations in the next two to three weeks, but you know, the kid took a hard hit. <laughs> he was actually furloughed from both, both jobs and just recently last week came back on with his government position. But um, yeah, it's, it's tough for, the, for uh, some of the millennials um, that are working a couple of jobs and, and they might be losing half, if not all of their income during these times. Oh, without a doubt. You know, it's interesting. I was so glad, Lisa, I'm sure you were as well, because we are so different than the rest of the world. I, I feel a little bit like we're in Disney World, right? Yeah. That we live yeah. through it. But our quarantine experience has been totally different than, say, somebody in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, that it was cold, it was dreary. Maybe they're in um, high rise living and they had to really buckle up and not go out, which is just, I can't even imagine. Right. But likewise, we opened our restaurants, what was it, two weeks ago? Um, for sit-in, we had to do 25% occupancy, yes. and then they opened it again further on Monday. Yeah, it's exciting, and I, I have to admit that um, when they opened a couple weekends ago, um, some friends and, and my husband and myself, <laughs> we were first in line. <laughs> It did look a little different, but we went to one of our favorite restaurants, Nacho Mamas. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> and, you know, we, it was just a marvelous time. You know, the wait, the wait staff had their masks on and their gloves and we all distanced, but um, it felt good to just be out. Without a doubt. And that's just going to get better. Our governor here, although real estate's been essential the entire time, um, we have stopped our, our guests and our Airbnb and our VRBO. Um, they shut that down early on and they're about ready to open it. Um, heard different things about that. I think I heard some things on the 21st, but I think it's by county by county. We're still waiting to get the uh, definitive answer on that. But again, they opened our beaches. What was that, Lisa? A month ago? Uh, yeah, it's been three, maybe four weeks ago. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is why we moved here, right? I mean, that's crazy. Um, so unfortunately, the people at the, uh, you know, making in that 40,000 and less, you know, um, income were hit the hardest. But many of the folks that are, are buying homes from us and or your home, if you're selling, are making north of 100,000, definitely if they're a household. You know, the other thing, Lisa, that's really kind of interesting as well is this slide that we've been seeing for quite some time because the other thing that people are referring to this is in 2009 when the real estate market crashed well no one had equity in their home at that point and interesting enough look at this chart lisa i mean 42 percent of people own their home free and clear and then another percentage have at least 60 percent equity and that average is at least 177,000. Yes, nope. that's awesome, that, right? That's awesome. But Mary, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and get to that next slide because <laughs> what's even, you know, if you add that 15.4% uh, in there, uh, that gives us a total of 74.1% of homeowners have at least 40%, 41% uh, equity or more. And I mean, that's huge. That's, that's almost three out of four homeowners own at least 41% equity. So I, I, that just blows my mind. That's, that's an incredible number and, and that's, um, that's a great number. That's a healthy number. It is a healthy number. So if someone's coming into our market that needs to sell a home, they've got value in their home in order to put into another home. But if they're a first time home buyer or going to get a mortgage, Lisa, check this out at a, you know, a $200,000 mortgage with the interest rates the way they are right now, they're saving this a crazy amount of money over a 30 year. That is a crazy amount of money. That's, that's a new car money. <laughs> With that, and today's money for sure. And check out if they 
put a $40,000, $400,000 mortgage, what they're saving over that, you know, 30 year period. Right. And, you know, to this point, Mary, um, I've had several recent uh, buyers um, actually make the move to buy uh, because of the interest rates. You know, oftentimes, you know, we are concentrating on those that unfortunately are temporarily sidelined from being able to buy today. But it is also on the flip side, given so many more people more buying power um, and are those are the people that are making the decision today why wait at this point and so um, sellers I, I hope you're hearing us loud and clear there there are definitely people that are making the decision to buy now just because of, of these savings and these interest rates without a doubt I love that um, you know Zillow had their you know earnings announcement and Skylar Olson their senior principal economist said, just what you were saying, Lisa, many sellers with flexibility to delay or temporarily remove their listings, you know, have opted to do so, obviously because they, you know, because of the situation. Waiting out, perhaps waiting out the uncertainty. But now that more buyers are in the market, interest rates, location of where we are, everything else, those sellers are waiting back in, joining those who have remained motivated to sell for any number of life reasons. Mm -hmm. We're seeing that, aren't we, Lisa? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. You know, and it's a great time because, Lisa, look at what's happened in North America with showing time. This, um, what get, this, this gets me excited, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So, you know, back here about the end of March, early April, um, you're seeing the bottom of the showing time showings. Um, but look at what's happened in the U.S. Now, Lisa, interesting enough, U.S. is one thing, but let's look and see what's happening in our area, shall we? Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, and again, that's, that's why we like to do webinars like this, because our area is very unique, specific. Um, it's a destination. It's a, it's a smaller town um, and there's a lot of desire to move here and so let's take a peek at um, our showing activity right now um, so as you can see 2020 is going to be in the lighter color where you see the dip in april uh, around april 3rd um, and we're comparing it to, to last year, 2019 weekly average, where you, know, you see a slight decline and then it evens up and then another little incline and decline. So obviously the dip that hit in, in April, um, it doesn't look like it lasted very long, does it, Mary? It lasted, what we've got April 3rd to April 17th, and then it starts climbing and climbing. We see a tiny little dip there in May, but it is, it is heading straight up. And that's the exciting news. Um, you know, if, if we would continue to see a decline after April 3rd and it keep going, it, it hit a low and now we are, we are going straight up and only going up from this point. So this is an exciting slide. It is an exciting slide. And you know what, Lisa, we're almost back to where we were in 2019. Right. You see that 18.7 compared to 15.2 there. So neck and neck, we're, the lights are back on here in Naples. And, and interesting enough, not everybody's here, right? They still haven't opened it up for our guests with all those people that can't wait to get here. Hey, correct. Correct. Talk about the pendings. Tell me about what's happening here in pendings. Okay, so exciting news. I, I try and check on a daily basis um, what, what the pendings are, and I'm seeing a trend. Uh, yesterday, Mary, I pulled up the amount of pendings, and, and I do it within a week. I do, do it zero to seven days. And so yesterday, I pulled zero to seven days, and we had 805 pendings. That's amazing news. But guess what? Today I pulled pending zero to seven days, 917 pendings. So What's that, the delta on that? It's over 100? Over 100. It, yes, it's like 112 just in, in 24 hours. So, oh my goodness. It is exciting. We had 387 closings. 
and uh, there's roughly 615 new listings and real estate is happening here in Southwest Florida and we, we need you to be a part of it. And this is, this is a great time. Just a great Absolutely. Time. You know, Lisa, tell everybody what we've been doing during this time, will you? Yeah, well, specific to our listings, um, as, as we go over this slide, home selling in a virtual world. Now, most of this is the same. There's a couple uh, new little pieces that we've had to add because of the uh, current health situation. Um, but you'll see overall, the Bartos Group is extremely consistent and just does an amazing job. So we will start off um, virtual or in-person home valuation. Again, we are still following CDC guidelines. And you know, if you're in town, we will meet and keep our distance. We have masks, we've got gloves, we've got sanitation wipes, we've got everything. So <laughs> we are set. Um, but most of this we actually can do uh, electronically. So that's a pretty cool thing. Uh, electronic signatures, our professional photos, the 3D walkthrough video, which you haven't seen those yet. They are, they are impressive. Um, our marketing, we have a whole marketing department that just is second to none. Um, the really cool thing that we've been doing are these uh, virtual open houses and home tours. And last month, I believe in April, we did, was it 15 sessions of open houses, Mary? We did times five properties each. So right. five homes. I, I'm pretty sure that's the math. <laughs> yeah, no, that sounds right to me. And it, we've had such success with those. We've, we've done them on, on Facebook Live and we have a team of amazing agents who have really acclimated to uh, this new normal. And we've gotten in there and we've gone through our, our virtual 3D and programs online. And um, if the home is vacant, we've gone live and shown the home. And so we've really kept our sellers um, at the top of the list as far as showing off their property and getting it marketed as best we can. Um, you know, the thing about the Bartos Group, we've had technology in place for years and we're just using it more than we've used in the past. So we were ready and we are able and we are, we are just doing an extreme job of, of bringing you uh, these virtual home tours. Um, we have been considered an essential business, so we are definitely doing um, tours and showings in person. So if you um, are shopping online and you see something and you're local and you want to get into property, uh, depending on what property that is, we are happy to get you right in it. Um, and sellers to you, if, uh, if you have a vacant home that you're wanting to sell and you allow us to bring folks in, that's what we're going to be doing. From there on out, everything is done online. Contract, elect uh, electronic signatures, earnest money, inspections, closings. Um, we do have um, you know, mobile notaries now. So that's, that's an extra special piece that um, one of my sellers actually got to use and made the process super smooth and super easy. So, you know, I can't say enough um, how painless we're making the selling process. Don't you agree, Mary? <laughs> Gosh, I really do agree because we've been doing most of these things and these couple of things that we've pivoted on have really brought, you know, attention to our properties, our customers' properties. You know, Lisa, you touched on it a minute ago about the virtual open houses. This was just um, one 10-day schedule of how many we did in that, you know, 10 days. And you know what I loved about doing these, and as we continue to do them, um, we do them live on Facebook. And so we're able to interact with everybody out there who's watching it and answer those questions on the spot. If uh, someone is interested in one of the homes we're showcasing, they're like, hey, you know, they can write in the comments, can you go back and show me the master bedroom? And so we can zip right back in there and do that. So that interaction is there. And uh, I think it's just been super fun to do them. Uh, I couldn't agree with you more. This was one of the uh, ads that we ran. Um, obviously, here's another one uh, highlighting one of the five properties going live. And Lisa, we talked about it. I know I don't have it, you know, hooked up live right now because we're in the slideshow. Mm -hmm. But 
about our 3D uh, tours that we're walking through people uh, with? Right, so um, our listings, um, we do have 3D virtual tours of our listings. And that's how we showcase them um, on our open houses. Oftentimes these virtual tours are attached to the listing that you can find on Zillow or in the MLS. And it's amazing how these cameras can capture, like Mary is in this amazing bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in Tropicana. I believe this is the Tropicana bathroom. Oh, without a doubt. I love this. <laughs> and so um, for us to be able to use our just our, our mouse pad and our computer, we can make this picture go uh, 360 degrees all the way around. So you can see every nook and cranny of every room and it will lead us from room to room. And you can see all the way around it's it's just it's just a beautiful tool that we have and um you know when you're talking about showing property this is this is just one avenue um i know for myself and for a lot of agents on the team we've been doing facebook live or zoom meetings with our out-of-town buyers at a lot of our properties and we just get in there with our phone and we do um a live walkthrough with with uh, a potential buyer. And then of course, like I said earlier, we are essential. So um, we are still doing in-person showings as well. Absolutely. Well, you know, Lisa, um, people are asking us, is it time to sell? And, you know, we really can't answer that for you. But what we can say is the buyers are here. The traffic is going up. They can't wait to get here. And just like Amazon, the portals that they go into are Realtor.com, Zillow, Trulia, Google, and uh, social media. They have these portals that they go in and you need to have your house ready so that when they can hit the buy button, you're ready. I mean, I don't know if we can stress that anymore. Well-priced properties are going quickly. Our marketing plan works. We have the technology and the skills with our team and if you've been thinking about selling, let us know now, because we, if you're just curious and you want to know what the value is, we can do that all day long, right, Lisa? Absolutely. Yeah. And if you really do want to put it on the market, please raise your hand and we'd love to do that. So make sure you instant message us, direct message us. Um, Lisa, give them your phone number. I could be reached at 269-532-6564. And the office number is 239-394-3040. My mobile number is 239-588-0230. But we would love to help you work, um, get your home sold. Sorry, you can tell I'm a working agent. My session's about ready to expire. I guess, Lisa, they're telling us it's time to get out of here. So we hope to look forward to working with you because remember, who you work with does matter. And we at the Bartos Group do look forward to working with you. Ciao. Ciao for now.